Hello, my friend, and welcome. I'm Morjex, and I have a charity event that's uh, coming up soon. I'm excited to share with you. So starting this June, I'm beginning the uh, my second annual Final Fantasy V Four Job Fiesta. I'll be playing through Final Fantasy V with randomly assigned jobs in order to raise money for Child's Play Charity. Um, I had a really great time last year, and I even got the treasured triple crown, which includes beating the final boss. I'm going to attack here instead of singing a song because I got to keep everyone on hand for healing. <gasps> we did it! High five! Oh, so good. Double high five. Oh, we did it, you guys. The super boss Omega. Stu says, can you just stop this guy into oblivion? I can, but I need like three people casting stop or I need people, two people casting stop who are hasted. Okay, that's... <gasps> We did it! Oh, it feels so good! Screw you, Omega. And the super boss Shinryu. Okay, that's fine. Keep attacking me. Keep attacking butts. Keep it not attacking Lena. Yes, 45,000! Come on, baby! Give it to me! Maelstrom, do it! I, I'm not even mad. Come on. Come on. Yes! Oh, so good! So good! Oh! We did it! <laughs> Triple crown in the bag, baby! In order to learn a little bit more about Child's Play Charity, I reached out to them on the excellent suggestion of my buddy Bardon Plays, uh, and I secured an interview, so that's pretty cool. Before we jump into that, I want to quickly go over the um, fun matching that I'm going to be doing this year. So, for every $1 that one of you donates to Child's Play Charity with uh, proof of that donation, I will donate two dollars uh as well and i've set aside five hundred dollars total for this matching um i'll also be doing the same match rate for any new or increased patreon pledges uh from now until when the event is over in case any of you want to support me in that way um if you donate at fourjobfiesta.com or on my patreon page let me know so i can match your contribution all right, here's the uh, interview I had with uh, Travis from Child's Play Charity so you can hear a bit about what they do. I'm sorry for the weird video. Um, I found out uh, after the fact, unfortunately, that my webcam cannot capture um, locally and also be used by Google Hangouts at the same time. So please apologize for the weird uh, uh, camera business, but let's get to it. Hello, my friend, and welcome. Thank you for taking time to join me. I am Morjax, and uh, we've got a special treat for you today. I'm joined by uh, Travis from Child's Play Charity here to talk a little bit about uh, what we're fundraising for for the Final Fantasy V Four Job Fiesta. So, Travis, welcome. Yeah, thanks for having me. Um, so, Child's Play Charity, uh, for those of you who don't know, has raised more than $40 million since 2003 um, to help children in uh, in hospitals and in abuse shelters uh, I think more than a hundred locations if I'm uh, if I've got my facts straight uh, yeah we have 115 US hospital partners we have uh, about another 25 international Canada UK Egypt India Australia New Zealand kind of all around there okay and then about a hundred and ten domestic violence shelters that we partner with okay okay well that's awesome um, I'm curious how you select uh, places that you, is it, do they reach out to Child's Play or do you reach out to them or a little bit of both? A um, little bit of both. A lot of hospitals that uh, the child life staff might work in a hospital that's a partner with us and then mm -hmm. move to a new hospital that's not. And then say, you, you guys aren't part of Child's Play? Holy cow, let's get this application filled out and, and, uh, and get it into us. Sure, sure. Okay, right on. Well, I'm curious how uh, how you came to be a part of the Child's Play che team and um, how long you've been uh, doing what you're doing. Yeah, I'm coming up on just about a year now with Child's Play. Um, okay. I have been uh, friends with Mike Krahulik at Penny Arcade for um, since around 2003, around the same time Child's Play started. Mm -hmm. uh, I run the Omegathon at all the PAX shows. So I've been, you know, not just friends with him, but involved with Penny Arcade and PAX shows that way. And um, when this position opened up, I was actually a, a teacher for 15 years prior. A middle okay. school teacher. And when this position opened up, they came to me and said, hey, you know, we got this opening and we think you'd be great for it. And uh, I thought, I better give it a try because Child's Play is pretty great and someone else is going to sweep in and pick this up if I don't get it. Yeah, and, for uh, sure. And well, that's it's awesome. Been, 
been a great year. Nice, nice. Well, I uh, I really admire what uh, what Child's Play is doing, and I I think it's um, I mean it's just a, a joy for me to uh, to be able to help you guys do what you do because it's really a great thing. Well, and we couldn't do it without the community support of all the people who do the fundraising for us. I mean, we are, we're a small team. There's two and a half of us that run Child's Play. Wow. Uh, <laughs> and and the, part of the reason is we don't have to go do the fundraising. We don't have to have someone that's, you know, just knocking on doors and calling people and writing grants and doing all that kind of stuff because of the community support of everybody like you putting on putting on videos and the people who, who watch these streams and donate to us. Nice. Well, we're happy to do it. It's a, it's a whole uh, network working together. Exactly. Um, so I, I was uh, kind of poking around the website a little bit, and there's um, there's a, a PDF that you've got there. That's the Therapeutic Video Game Recommendations List. I'm, I kind of flipped through it a little bit, but I, I'd like your take on, uh, on, on what purpose that serves and how that came to be a little bit. Yeah. So, you know, our... our our main focus, right, is children's hospitals, and the the child life staff at children's hospitals are are lots of ladies who are not necessarily gamers. They're in there. They love kids. You know, doctors and nurses are in there, and they're doing the the medical side of helping kids get better, the physical stuff. The child life staff is the ones that are helping with the emotional side. Um, they're making sure the education of these kids, you know, a kid who is in the hospital long-term is still moving forward. So they're not left behind uh, academically and things like that. Yeah. And they're not necessarily gamers. Um, and so Child's Play started out just sending game consoles, games and consoles and, and toys and, you know, getting stuff into kids. And we realized we've been doing for about two years now, a little over two years, um, hospital visits uh, mm -hmm. with our Gamers Give Back Tour. And in talking to Child Life staff there, um, we realized, you know, they don't, they don't know games like we know games. And so they would give kids games and we, we agree that, you know, any game is better than no game. Mm -hmm. But what that guide does is that guide really helps them select games to target what a kid is dealing with. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and it has a couple examples for kids younger than 12 or kids over 12, but it also gives them an idea of what to look for. So even if they don't have any of the titles that are listed, they can read the description about what the game should hold yeah. and then look at what they do have in their games library and say, oh, okay, this is a game that could be successful in helping someone deal with anxiety. Right, right. And like, um, a, go ahead. Yeah, so it was designed as an education tool for child life staff. Um, it's also a great tool for them to print to uh, present to hospital administrators. You know, when they're justifying buying this stuff. You know, why do we why spend money here when we can spend money over here? Mm -hmm. uh, it's a great resource for parents. We just try and get it to everybody that we can. Um, we had a meeting today with another nonprofit based out of the Pacific Northwest that works with grieving families of someone, mm -hmm. you know, a family member who has passed. Um, so lots of siblings, kind of their focus is on kids and siblings. And we were talking to them about how Child's Play works and what we do and um, and showed them that recommendation guide. And they were like, oh, games. We haven't thought of games before as a way to engage with um, with these teens. You know, a teen who might have lost a sibling to, to a disease. Yeah. Grieving, but doesn't, you know, they're teens. They don't want to go to a camp. They want to do things like that. But you can right. reach them through games, right? And so they were really intrigued and excited about that. So we share that that resource guide anywhere we can. And we're mm -hmm. super excited with that partnership with EDAR. Um, we actually now, we're going to have a new guide. Hopefully we'll have the new one out in May. And it'll have, along with the console games, also iOS games, mobile games, and VR games. So okay. that nice. we can really expand as, as you know, Gaming's much more than just an Xbox or a PlayStation now. Yeah, yeah. And so uh, you described that uh, this can be a tool to like administrators to say, here's, it's sort of the justification or or it gives a little more detail in terms of the, the decision. Um, and I, I remember when I first, this was probably two, three years back when I first heard about Child's Play Charity. Um, I, uh, that was my reaction too. Like, well, of course, it, it makes a lot of sense for kids in this situation to have games that they can distract themselves and keep themselves busy and uh it just it made a lot of sense to me and i just had never thought about it before coming across child's play um yeah as, as a gamer right like it yeah, makes yeah. Perfect. 
when you say, man, I'm just I'm so stressed out today. I'm feeling really anxious about something. There are games I can go pick up right now. I can play for 20 minutes and feel way better. Yeah, yeah. And and just we know that, that they can help us emotionally. And yeah, it's not a thing that everybody thinks of. And it's not even a thing that a, that a gamer necessarily thinks to like verbalize until someone says it. And you go, of course. Mm-hmm. Yeah, mm-hmm. that now. Yeah, and I was just looking through that list, and it's like, man, I want to p- go play these games. That sounds great. Yeah. So it's, yeah. it's a good list for sure. Um, so in terms of uh, some of the the child's play events that I'm aware of, um, sort of most prominently in my sphere is uh, I've got some buddies who are super into Desert Bus for Hope. And they get like, I mean, a lot of people get really into oh, it, yeah. and it's it's quite a spectacular event. Uh, and then, of course, Final Fantasy V. I'm, I'm getting really excited for the uh, event starting in June. Um, I'm curious about what some of uh, your favorite events are and, and what you like about them. Um, you know, the, the Desert Bus is amazing, right? Ten years, they put on that huge, amazing show for a week long. They are mm-hmm. outstanding. But I love the way the community comes together. My favorite one, and I, and I love this for two parts. One, it's a little girl who's six. She has the same birthday as my younger son. Um, and this year she decided to forego presents for her birthday party and asked all her friends just to donate money towards child's play. Mm-hmm. She spent 365 bucks, right? Like enough money to buy an Xbox for a kid in a hospital. You know, it's gonna get used a couple hundred times. Right. Um, but, you know, just everything from that, we've got college game clubs that put them on, high school seniors that do it as a senior project. Um, you know, anywhere from those tiny things all the way up to those big desert bus productions are are amazing and it's what makes our community outstanding right like someone does that tiny little thing and and you know that that the little girl didn't just pick this out of thin air right like it's her parents too so it's that engagement on on all those levels of parents and and making it an important value in their in their family yeah for sure and you know i think that there's something um almost a little bit magical to have that like like boots on the ground frontline engagement like it doesn't have to be this huge event it's just everyday people who are helping out other everyday people and i I just think that's awesome yeah um so i'm curious if there's any particular uh events or new initiatives that child's play is is uh gotten in the kitchen coming up in the next year or two um, we have coming up this summer, so we used to do um, the golf tournaments every every summer, kind of late spring. Yep. And um, the the demand for golf was kind of dying off, I guess. I don't know. It, mm-hmm. it, the change happened before I came in, but they moved to a table tennis tournament last year. And it was a lot okay. of fun. We had a day-long table tennis tournament. Um, and it was, it was a fun day, but the thing that I pushed to add to it, and so I'm hoping it turns out really well because I'm the one who kind of added this piece, yeah, yeah. is we're looking this year to add sort of a family fair to it also. Mm-hmm. You know, the table tennis, you kind of come all day and you ditch your family and play table tennis. Um, but we're looking at, you know, we're going to have coinciding with the table tennis tournament, we'll have the outside area around the field house where the tournament is mm-hmm. with a bouncy house and a mini golf course. And we're, we're working to get Seattle children's to come down there and an info booth about child's play um, to sort of make it a place you could bring your family to. And another way to, in you know, for parents to engage kids who, who might not otherwise know, like, how do I broach this subject with my kids? Maybe, you know, gaming is important to them, but they don't know how to do it. But also just as an outreach into families in the area, um, mm-hmm. it is an event they can come do for a day, but then connect with them and make them go, you know, have those parents who are like, oh, video games, no way. And then they, you know, come hang out at our event. And then they see like, oh, maybe it's not so bad that my kid wants to play Minecraft all the time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So uh, a little spinoff question about that. I, I My parents were very... Uh, open about you know as long as i like helped out with the chores around the house and i got my homework done they kind of just cut me loose to just do what i want and that for me that was awesome because i just you know as a kid i just wanted to go play super mario rpg and chrono trigger and like that was all i needed i was just a happy camper um but i'm curious with with those sorts of parents that might not immediately you know they might not be gamers and and the the um the goal might not immediately click with them is there ever any um kind of like connecting outreach between um, like them seeing the actual 
places where this is helping or is it is it events like you kind of described where you've got a booth and you've got kind of this other sorts of engagement so you can engage the hospitals and you can engage the the contributors each yeah this is our first time to really kind of work on expanding with that family right mm -hmm. we've been doing it a little bit with with that that guide um we've been we've had a booth ever at, at every pack since pax west um so we had one at south we had one at east and yep. we were able to engage with families there but right those are still very much in our target audience um and so this will be our first real outreach to uh maybe non-gaming families okay to but you know the the one of the ladies we met with with that nonprofit today said you know oh my son will be super excited that i'm at the penny arcade building and like all this stuff like yeah, yeah. i don't really get it sometimes i just think he's playing his games too much and by the time we left, you know, we went through the guide with her. We talked about sort of how we engage the community with games and how, how games help us uh, do the fundraising and how they help kids in hospitals and sort of, you know, everything about Child's Play with her. And she was like, oh, you know, it makes more sense when my son, like he had, he had voiced to her before playing Destiny sort of helps me get some aggression out. It helps me connect and like, this is how I meet my friends. Um, and just having that conversation with us Mm -hmm. Helped her sort of go like, oh, I guess you're right. It does make sense. Like, yeah, that's what he said. And 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 he had tried to voice that to her, but just having another outside presentation, right, right, and and well, presented, framed in a different way. Yeah, we're one for one so far, but you know, we got yeah, that's that's perfect. That's where you start. Yeah, we um, got the software to work on it now. Yeah, yeah. Well, that's awesome. I I like I said, I just think it's so great to. Um, I mean, it, it, like with the uh, with the recommendation guide, when you present it to these these nurses and these uh, caretakers and doctors, um, it seems like they they get it more often than not. They oh, they yeah. get the the difference that it makes to these kids that are in honestly kind of a bad situation. Yeah, um, especially the child life staff. I mean, they eat it up. They already know, you know, like that's what the kid wants already. The kids in there, they're stuck in their bed, and the first thing they ask for is, "Do you have games I can play?" Right. Like, right. What can I come on? You got to have something. Um, and so they already know. And so it's a nice tool for them. It's also been a great way to engage doctors. Um, you know, we're finding a lot of, you know, doctors are hitting to be our age now, right? They're in there. Yeah. They're in, which is a little family. strange, but there you have it. Yeah, I, uh, I met one. I met one when I was at Yale. I just did a hospital visit to Yale Children's and he was the same age as me. And I was like, wait a second. You're like this super smart doctor doing all the, you know, like curing these kids. And you're, you can't be my age. Like you have to be some old man, but he's not right. Like they're, mm -hmm. they're too. Um, and so they hear about the visits we're doing. They get excited. They come down and meet us. We're connecting these doctors across the country now who are all looking at using games and using VR and, you know, like, that's that's that validation that's starting to really pick it up and they're the ones who can sort of help lead that research and help help reach out and and so yeah, yeah we're that guide has been super successful nice well that's awesome i am i am so revved up to earn money for these kids right now it's going to be great um so travis i appreciate you taking some time out to uh to chat with me here and and thank you for um i had kind of flipped through the site um even if a couple of years back just to see what it was all about uh but i appreciate you uh taking some time to g give us a little more details yeah absolutely and like i said without you guys without you guys putting on the streams and all the all the community members who watch you and then donate to us through that um we wouldn't be able to do what we do and and we're just the little faucet for this huge support and outpouring that gamers have for all these kids and the situation they're in and uh I mean, when we when we do the hospital visits, they're just like, oh, thank you guys so much. And it's like, we're just, don't thank us. Like, this right. is who's there. Thank those these gamers. So, mm -hmm. uh, yeah, you guys in the community are such a huge support and mean so much to us that we, we do it. There, there are no words. Great. Well, I appreciate it. I appreciate all that uh, you and the team does. And uh, let's go make some difference. All right. Well, have a great time. I will uh, be checking in on the on the Final Fantasy and see how it goes. Please do. I would love it if uh, if you or or uh, any of your buddies would uh, drop in on the stream and shoot the breeze for a little while. Yeah, we'll try and get it fit in. We'll see who all I, who all I can get in to jump in. All right. Thank you. All right. Have a good one. Thanks a lot. Yep. You too. So that wraps it up uh, until we start the charity stream, which will be mid-June. Uh, last year, I think it took me right around six weeks or so to beat. That was streaming a few nights a week. 
Uh, please let me know any and all questions you've got down in the comments below. And I look forward to hanging out with you playing some Final Fantasy V starting mid-June. Thanks for watching.